This is the new area where China is building, it's actually Dorle, uh, where China is building this new, uh, this new port. I don't have the most up-to-date pictures. If you're, if you're good at Google Earth, you can go find it. Um, but it's, uh, it's really quite impressive what China is building. But the most important and most interesting aspect of, of what it's building is, uh, is an enormous commercial port system here. It's enormous um, in, a, in a country that's uh, frankly quite poor. Um, so why? That's an interesting question, right? So I've been looking into trying to understand why, and what I, what I understand is that China's building this very large, you, it's, it, you really don't see it here, it's just the very beginning of the, of the construction here. It's much more advanced than that. Um, it's beginning to develop a commercial port um, because China is looking to develop this, this region, the Horn of Africa region, in terms of a, of a market. Like one of the, the key components of China's economic strategy is to develop new markets overseas. And Ethiopia is an expanding market for China. And one of the key uh, uh, ports that will service that area is this port in Djibouti. So what we see with China's Silk Road Initiative is, a, uh, is really connecting some continental, sort of closed continental parts of the world with the maritime system. Now, we tend to think that we have a globalized world, right? We hear it all the time. We talk about that all the time. We have a globalized world. But in fact, that's not exactly right. What we have is a maritime world if you think about it. Because countries, well, let's put it this way. If you're Saudi Arabia and you have oil and gas and a long coastline, you get to sell it cheap because you, can, you, you just have to get it to the port and on a ship it goes, right? You can, you can take it to your market. If you're Kazakhstan or if you're Siberia, um, you have a big problem, which is you've got to compete with someone with basically no pipeline um, by, by building an, a long pipeline and the costs associated with getting a product to market. Um, in other words, your, your product has to be more expensive than somebody who, who can participate more easily in the maritime system. So fundamentally what we have is a maritime economy. Countries that can connect easily to the maritime economy can compete effectively. So what China is doing is a very interesting strategy. It's, it's um, beginning to invest in infrastructure to unlock uh, economies that were uh, previously uh, shut out of the maritime system. It's doing this with um, a second area in the port of Gwadar. This is a port in Pakistan that is being developed by the Chinese almost out of whole cloth. Um, it's, it's a small port, but it's a, a, a port being developed by the Chinese. And what you can see here is China, sort of um, western China. This is actually the province of Xinjiang. And, uh, and in Kashgar, China is developing a sort of a continental hub, the, the sort of western province of Xinjiang, and then developing a corridor of, of uh, infrastructure to uh, connect Western China in order to, to develop Western China because Western China has been left out of China's economic miracle. Really, what China's economic miracle is, is a coastal miracle because that's where you can compete from, right? So China's building infrastructure to the closest port, which is not in China, it's in Pakistan. Uh, in, in Gwadar. And so it's connecting its um, its um, in inner inland markets to, to the ocean through these ports. This is really sort of the initial stage, at least, of what I think is being developed as an important uh, aspect of the Maritime Silk Road. It's really the value of the Maritime Silk Road is primarily in unlocking continental markets to the maritime market. So we will move closer to a true global market, I think, through, through this Chinese initiative. And that has some real benefits. Now, this is going to be hard for China, let's be honest. Those of you who have been uh, 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 following the news know that this is not the most peaceful and stable area of the world. But China's got at least some policies meant to mitigate those problems. One is that there are special security forces designed to protect the infrastructure that's being developed between, or that is, mu much of it really is planned. Uh, there is some infrastructure developed already between uh, Kashgar and Gwadar. Uh, mostly, the, uh, I'll pronounce this wrong, I suspect, the Karakoram Highway. Um, and, and that's the beginning of, of that process. But it, it will include rail, it will include uh, pipelines if it, if it really comes into full fruition. And that'll bring uh, trade down here to, to the Arabian Sea and in, into Gwadar. Um, 
Now, of course, uh, China's, so the first thing it has is special um, uh, uh, security forces, both, um, both some Chinese, but mostly Pakistani special, special uh, security forces to protect it. And second, um, what China intends to do is to actually develop uh, not just the two ends, not just um, Kashgar and Gwadar, but, but the route along the way as well. Why? It's a brilliant uh, part of the strategy, in my view, because what it does is it gives the local population an interest in maintaining the security of that infrastructure, right? If you have, if this is where your job is, because there's a factory halfway up the, the pipeline, well, you have an interest in making sure that that factory stays uh, secure and the pipeline that's associated with it. So if China is able to follow through and develop the, the, the line itself, that could have a, a stabilizing effect to, to um, overcome some of the security difficulties that, of, of course, China will have to face.